Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this particular video, we'll be talking about for each loop that we have in Lightning Web Component. Okay, so let's get started with a scenario. Let's say you have a requirement wherein you have to uh, query data from Salesforce. Let's say, for example, you have to query all the accounts that are there in your Salesforce org, and then you have to display all the details of, uh, of those accounts, okay? So for example, if let's say you have 50 accounts in your org, so the first thing that you would be doing is you will query all those accounts, right? In your Apex controller. And once you have that details in your JS file and once you pass it to HTML, you need some kind of iterator, right? Which can display each and every data one by one, right? Because you're not only displaying one account, but you have 50 accounts in this scenario, right? So that kind of, uh, you, you would need some kind of iterator, right? So one of, those is for each loop that we have in Lightning Web Components. And when you are using for each loop, you always have to use it along with the template tag. Okay, that is one thing. And then the second point is that you always have to make use of key directive. Okay, the moment you are trying to display the data because once uh, you're using the key directive along with the uh, data that you, you want to display, let's say if there's a change in any of the existing data, right? So it improves the performance and it will be it will only be updating the data which got updated and not everything right so that is why key directive is important okay so let's just go ahead to visual studio code and get started with an example so i will go ahead and i will create a lwc component first And because I have to query data from Salesforce, I will go ahead and create a Apex class. Okay, so I'll define a function and this will return me list of account because that's what I want to query. Get account details. So, and here's my query, select uh, ID name from account. And I don't want to query everything because I have a lot of account data. So let me only query 50 or let's say, because the page would be full, right? So I'll just only query these. And as I'm going to use the wire service in order to call this method, so I will use aura enabled tag first so that this method would be identified by LWC component. And as you guys already know that wire service uses client cache, right? So I will make it as true, okay? So my class is ready and let me deploy this. Meanwhile, we'll go back to the component that we have created. Okay, and then here's my JS file. So I know that I would be making use of wire service. So I'll import that and I also have to import my method, right? That I just created, get accounts from, this name you can give whatever you want. And then uh, at the rate Salesforce, sorry, I missed at the rate. Apex and then slash, and then I would have to give the class name and then dot method name, right? That's the format, no name dot, method name this is how you import a apex class method okay so here it is now what will i do is i am going to make use of wire method okay and this here you would have to pass the variable in which you have imported the method okay so this is what i am passing here and every call okay every method call is going to return you a promise okay and you have to store that using some function or anything so i will take it as uh, account details okay and that's it let me deploy this okay or i should have deployed the whole component but that's all right and let's just go ahead go and to the html file okay so as i said that you have to um, when you want to use for each loop right you have to use it inside a template tag right so before i start i want to check if there is any data in this list or not right if this is returning any data or not without that i don't want to 
render that this th that particular temp template where I would be uh, iterating over the data. Okay. So first of all, I will put a condition. Okay. If true, and what I want to check is I want to check whether uh, this and this promise will always like you know the promise that it returns right the response this was that will always have data and error okay so i am checking if there is any data or not okay and if there is any data then only i want to render my this nested template okay and in this nested template i will iterate over the data and i will display the account names okay so template and then for each okay and in this for each what what do i have to pass i have to pass the array on which i want to iterate and what is my array my array is this dot data right because this has data and errors so this dot data okay and then i have to give a for each sorry for item attribute okay and i'll say it as acc so this is basically like you know uh, over your data this is like a reference to your each and every record okay so that is why we created so that when while displaying it we will refer this particular um, attribute okay reference and then uh, and then let's just display the data inside let me create a tag okay and in this tag what will i do i have to pass the key right as we discussed that whenever there is a change in any of the data right this key will help to update the value okay whichever got changed this dot id and then here it is and inside this what i want to display i want to display the account name and that's it okay this sorry account dot name okay so this is done so here what will happen if there is any data then only this particular template nested template will get rendered okay and the same way what i want to do is i want to write the same logic for error okay if there is anything in the account details dot error then only i want to render the template which i am going to create now okay so template if true and what do I have to pass? I have to pass this dot error, right? If there is anything in the error, then only this particular section should get rendered. Otherwise not, okay? So let me close it. And here, what I want to display, I will simply display account details, okay, dot error. okay so what will happen here here i will get all the list of 20 accounts that i have queried right and every now i have that array of accounts so on that array what will happen this loop will like you know start iterating and each and every every for each and every record it will keep on iterating till there's a value in the list okay the moment that list is empty it will come out of it okay so now let me go ahead and change the config file And so we'll deploy this component as well. Now, when we go to the org and fetch this particular drag and drop this component on one of the record pages, it should show me the accounts, right? Whatever I have queried. So I've queried 20 accounts and out of those accounts, what I'm trying to display, I am displaying the account names, right? And I had to, I had to like, you know, query the ID because I'm using the ID as the key, right? So if, if you got confused there, so, okay, this I've already deployed. Now let's go to the org and let me open one of the records. And I'll remove the previous components that we had from the previous demo. What's the component that we have? It's for each demo. So let me drag and drop that here. Okay. So uh, it is displaying me ACC name, ACC name, ACC name because I have, 
one second. This is, we did a mistake over here, right? Because this has to be within curly brackets, right? That is why it is simply displaying me whatever I wrote in here. And deploy. Okay, and let me save it and we'll go back to the page and see what it displays. Okay, so here it is. It is showing me 20 accounts and it is showing me all the names. I have some um, bogus accounts in my art. That is why it is showing me like this. But if you have created proper accounts, it will show you proper names, okay? So this is how you can uh, use for each loop in order to iterate over a list of items that you have. I hope you at least got the idea how to uh, like you know get started with it. And I'll see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye.